out of their four games, he scored 20 plus in three of them. He can fill it up in a hurry. Lineups presented by Ram Trucks. And we are just about set to go as the 11th ranked Spartans will try to get to three and one under that man. Tom Izzo hired back in 1995 and looking for win number 577 tonight. Yeah, this, this is an interesting game because Tech comes in with some holes in their approach, high turnovers, they don't get on the glass real well. So it looks like a recipe for success for the Spartans, but you still got to come out and play the game. You got to be ready. So the opening tap knocked out of bounds. You mentioned the turnovers. That will be something to watch. So far, 21 and a half turnovers a game for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, it's something, that, especially on the road, you get the ball up that much, you really dig yourself a hole. And they struggled in a loss. Friday at North Carolina did Tennessee Tech. The road doesn't get much easier here tonight. Ward, hey, that right ankle looks pretty good. Yeah, Nick Ward is ready to go. He really took care of himself after the first half when he got hurt in Louisiana Monroe. Didn't come out for the second half, and getting on that ankle early really helped. There is Micaiah Henry. He and Ward, that'll be a fun matchup to track. But Ward with that big body was able to push him away from the goal, force a tough shot. Cassius Winston. Foul inside, saving Winston from the turnover. Let's go back to Ward's first bucket. When Nick Ward gets this deep, when he can crab dribble and get a foot in the paint, there's not much you're going to be able to do. Let's see if Tech will try to change up their defense a little bit, maybe come and double team him sometime. That's why he's such a difference maker, because opponents have to send two defenders at him a lot. Yep. And he's done a much job, better job of passing the basketball. Well, right there, he's way too open. He lost the ball, but it still went in. Boy, he's got some elevation, too, so I think that ankle is fine. Good job by the Spartans moving the basketball against the zone. Ward was laughing about that when he wanted to throw it down with the left hand. It slipped. Yeah, he doesn't even have a brace on that right ankle. Oh, nice switch there defensively. Getting late in the shot clock. Alexander. Well, the is zone almost fake Johnny Vassar. And now they won't even get the shot off. Great defense by Michigan State. Yeah, Vassar should have let that one go, even though it was a little early with his zone. But nice job. Look at that pass in the zone. And he's going to laugh about that one tomorrow <laughs> film. <laughs> His teammates might be laughing at him on that one in the film. No doubt. Winston overhead skip. McQuaid buried his game this year a lot. He's going inside of the basketball. Now here's the double team that we talked about. And then they work it around nicely out of that double team, but McQuaid misses it. Goins to Winston. In and out. For Michigan State to be elite, McQuaid is going to have to get more consistent on that shot. He's trying to mix his game up. This is a better ball club than talking about Michigan State. It's going to be a foul against Tennessee Tech. They're going to get Johnny Vassar, who I mentioned started his career at Northwestern. And he's coached by Steve Payne in his eighth year after being an assistant the previous nine years with the Golden Eagles. And he's, it's fun talking to him before the game. And, understand his personnel and some of the mindset that they take into these challenges on the road. Another miss by McCoy. Yeah, he was telling us his team's really dinged up a couple of key entries right now that's holding Tennessee Tech back. Yeah, they're going to need it because they're in the ultra-competitive Ohio Valley Conference. That's a really good conference for Big Ten fans that really don't know much about that league. Very talented league. First Michigan State foul going to go against Cassius Winston. Got Jacksonville State, who you saw earlier this year, pretty good. They're very good. Played Penn State down the stretch, very tough. You know, Belmont, people remember yep. that name. Murray State. Murray State. Talented lead. Spartans off to the 4 nothing start. Alexander, nowhere to go, needs some help. Henry. Hands it off, and they might not get another one off. Vic off balance. The defense strong again, but Henry bails him out. Offensive rebound. Ward blocks his shot. Winston 
to Langford, inside, beautiful pass to Nick Ward. Wow, Nick Ward has established himself, and his teammates are looking for him. I, I thought Langford could have taken that jumper, Brandon. I was surprised he did, but a great look inside. So all six points from the junior, Nick Ward. Well, this defense has been suffocating here early on. Finally, Courtney Alexander II, whose father was a former first-round pick in the NBA draft, gets the bucket for Tennessee Tech. And Ward has eight points, and he'll try to make it nine at the strike. Wow. That's tough to ask Henry to go one-on-one -on -one against Ward. Let's him get to a strong left hand. Watch here, he crab dribbles, they're trying to dig, they're not double teaming. And once Nick Ward recognized that, went right into his move. So let me ask you, we mentioned the double team. If you're Tennessee Tech at this point, do you double every time on the catch? I think you still have to mix it up, Brandon. You want to give Michigan State something to think about, make a cause for the pause. You see what I mean? Yep. And, you know, right now, Henry's on the bench. But they, they need to give Michigan State a different look because if not, they'll go to Ward every time. Nice backdoor slash there. Johnny Vassar in the scoring column. See if they try to dump it back into 44. They do. Patiently. That is a tough matchup. You mentioned Henry off the bench. Garrett Golday trying to hold Ward in check. But Nick Ward on both ends. The block, and then he has all eight for the Spartans. And they're up early. In on the block, Nick Ward coming out extremely strong. Miles on the bench. He's going to get a quick breather right here at the 1545 mark. You know, when you talk about Nick, you know, he tested the NBA waters, and NBA people basically said the same thing that Tom Izzo's been telling him since his time. And ever since he's come back from that, they said he's been a, a great example of hard work and a great teammate. And Tom Izzo said, sometimes you need somebody other than your parents to tell you. That's right. <laughs> so somebody other than his parents told him, and now he's listening. Yep. Isn't that funny how that works? Yep. I think we've all been there at some point in our lifetime. But Nick Ward is responding admirably with a strong start to the season. Hunter Vick once again late in the shot clock here, and he airballs it. So Xavier Tillman out there for the first time, as is Kyle Arns and the freshman Bingham, and it's Arns missing the triple but following his own shot. Langford will try. Got it. He just can't give Michigan State multiple opportunities on each possession. He'll find a way. Kyle Aarons is going to be key as well. I know I talked about McQuaid being able to stretch the floor, but Kyle Aarons can plug the hole on a few different positions. Be very valuable for the Spartans team. And Tom Izzo sang his praises. I talked to him last week. And this is Winston stopping pop 13 to 4. Timeout, Tennessee Tech. Largest lead at nine right now. And let's take a look at this message from Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Are hiring delays causing work to pile up? That's not smart. Then there's smart. Zip Recruiter finds people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. So you get qualified candidates fast. That's why Zip Recruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. Zip Recruiter, the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Big Ten. So 14.30 left in the opening half of Michigan State already imposing their will. And yeah, I'm not surprised to see this. Michigan State was very focused in the shoot around. And a lot of times they're playing against themselves in certain non-conference matchups like this. Winston just great pacing here. Gets to a sweet spot. One of the better three-point shooters in all of Big Ten, but showed his mid-range game as well. He had 23 in the win over Louisiana Monroe. 14 of them in the second half early that really separated the Spartans in that game and got them to two and one. Garrett Golday 
nice left hand against the taller Xavier Tillman. I like that play coming out of a timeout. A little misdirection. Start from weak side, bring it back to strong side. Go day. Like the response here by Tennessee Tech. Langford trying for another one. That went a little strong. Foul on the rebound and will go the other direction. And Golday, he's very undersized inside. He is, man. He got low, got away, nice step through with the left hand off the glass. Beautiful move. And Xavier Tillman. Their leading scorer, Henry, still on the bench. Gold Day going to have to pick up the slack on the offensive end. Henry just one foul. Nice job splitting the defenders there by Clay, but then he threw it away. Arns tracks it down, lays it in. Wow, Arns. Tell you what, you get out on the break like that, you got to run with, if you're a Michigan State spark. I mean, they run, make or miss, continue to put pressure on the opposing team. Alexander gets bumped after a very nice spin move. And on that last possession, let's see that fast break. Good hands there by McQuaid. Nice lead to Kyle Arns. Just an easy layup there, but you turn the turnovers into buckets that quickly, boy, it makes it so much easier on the offense. Yes, he shoots these underhand. Courtney Alexander, his sophomore year was 34% shooting overhand, so last year he switched at 51% improvement, so he's trying it again this year. Hey, man, whatever works, and if Rick Barry, a, a Hall of Fame player, shot off, I think 90% or something like that from the free throw line underhanded, I'm surprised more people don't do it. Uh, he hasn't had the success that Rick Barry has, but how about that? Whatever works, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's much easier to do that. I think that some guys that have the shooting form. So, I like it. And it's one of two. Ward back into the basketball game. Passes out of the double team. And Winston buries the triple. See, that's, that's the pick your poison for Michigan State. Boy, Tom Izzo loved that play, too. Travel. Well, you said it. You can't double all the time. You got to do a bunch of different things, dig down. But here, you see how this works when they do double. Yeah. The thing is, they're doubling off of one of the best three-point shooters in the country. That's not the guy to double off of. You got to stay home on Cassius Winston. Last year, Winston 49.7 percent in Big Ten play from behind the arc. Here he is getting fouled on the drive. Tennessee Tech foul on four, Junior Clay. His first person, 15th foul. Foul on Junior Clay. Brown into the basketball game for Michigan State. Part of that freshman class. Nice little wrinkle there by Tech out of the zone defense. Double team in the first pass. And then the three no good by the aforementioned Gabe Brown and the foul against the Spartans. Several Spartans this year stepping up to fill the void, of course, of Jaron Jackson and Miles Bridges. But Langford, Winston, Goins, especially Goins, what improvement. That's great. And, and here's the thing. These guys, it's their time now. You know, Kenny Goins it seems like he's been here for about 15 years, but the elder statesman in that group. But these juniors have been playing from day one. This is their time to step up and have an increased role. Another Tennessee Tech turnover. Langford in particular, he's a guy at the start of the year that Tom Izzo said, we got to have more offense from him, waiting for him to get at that high level. He's showing it this season. He is, and, and he's a guy that has always been able to shoot the outside shot. I want to see him get to the rim a little bit more. He's got a really good body, lively legs. I think he can create a lot more havoc, mixing his game up a little bit more. Winston can't hit. Right now, Langford on the bench, getting a breather. This is 
see if Henry can slip here on the pick and roll. Travel. Garrett Golday shuffled his feet before he put it on the deck. Good camp. That's a lot right. Of creativity. That's right. In the end zone, one of the best in the nation. Langford hit the three earlier, but Michigan State two of ten collectively from outside the arc. They haven't missed inside the arc, though. Six of six. That means Nick Ward needs to touch the basketball. Instead, it's a three from Winston. Well, you, you, you have to pay attention to his driving ability, and he sets you up so nicely to rise in that jump shot. The defender couldn't even respond. A quick release makes it 21 to 7. Junior play over to Vic. Vic tried to curl it back in, so Henry has returned to the game, and they go right to him, and it works. Well, I'll tell you what, Makaya and Henry. You got it. Hey, I, want, I don't want mom to get mad, but Makaya Henry is built like he plays in the Big Ten. Like, this is a well put together young man. Takes his time, but they're not going to double team. He's going to get to that over that left shoulder every chance he gets. He's big, but he's not as barrel chested as Nick Ward, but he's going right into it. He's not scared. I agree. And, you know, older guy, he's, he's seen enough junior right now, so he's seen some of the battles that you could see in the OVC, the Ohio Valley Conference. I'm really high on Xavier Tillman. He's in the game now. I, I think he is going to be outstanding before his days are over here at Michigan State. Just a sophomore is Tillman. Had 11 points and a career-high 13 rebounds against Louisiana Monroe. Maybe his best game in a Spartan uniform. Yeah, and, and these are the type of players that coaches absolutely love because every time he comes on the floor, he stays within himself offensively. He's going to be on the glass. He defends. He's a great teammate. Barnes, nice shot fake. Into the 15-footer, friendly bounce at the Breslin Center. Barnes yeah, looking very comfortable right now. And he's a... A sneaky athlete. I don't think a lot of people understand how athletic he really is. That shirt junior, so he'll have this in one more season. Off the bounce and off the glass for Johnny Vassar. Pretty good move. Didn't appear to be anything there. Langford, good extra pass. And off the deflection. Langford getting on a deck. Had it ripped away. Good hustle by Junior Clay. The tie-up will give it to Tennessee Tech. Take a look at this. Kyle, the ball fake. Ladies and gentlemen, younger players, there's nothing wrong with the mid-range game. It doesn't have to be a dunk or a three-point play. You can mid-range your opponent to death. Brandon, with analytics and things, they're teaching our younger players to shy away from that. I, I, I disagree. Arns is good at it. Langford is really good at the mid-range game. Yes, he is. You know where Tennessee Tech wants to go to Micaiah Henry, but not there. Right, out of bounds to Michigan State. Michigan State basketball. Tennessee Tech from Cookville, Tennessee. Enrollment just over 10,000, as we talked about in the Ohio Valley Conference. That is a very underrated league again this season. Can't leave Langford that wide open, although that time it worked for him. Tennessee Tech, after a slow start on the glass, they're starting to shore themselves up on the defensive glass, limiting the Spartans to one attempt. And that's going to be key, because against North Carolina, they were minus 30 in the rebounding category. Oh, my goodness, no foul there. Johnny Vassar may have gotten bumped. He wanted to call. Vassar, a guy who hasn't played before this season in three years. He spent his freshman year at Northwestern, stayed there, got the academic degree, but hadn't played basketball the last three seasons. Yeah, and that's tough. You know, when you get the game taken away from you or, you know, whatever situation, and you're not able to continue playing, it takes a while to get back. Well, that's what Coach Steve Payne was saying. It's kind of like a freshman this year all over again. Yep. Because you got to learn different terminology. you got to get your timing back. you got different teammates you have to deal with. Backup guard freshman Foster Lawyer drawing the contact against Jared Sherfield. 
That's a good decision right there. It looked like that was going to be a difficult possession. And Foster put his head down and got to the rim through the contact. Speaking of Foster Lawyer, he and Dane Fife played at Clarkston, where Dane Fife's dad, Dan Fife, is the head coach. Michigan Mr. Basketball, just don't tell Dane that they're 20 years apart. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear that. Bingham had it blocked. That's all right. Dane. There's Dane. He's a good player, man. Good college player. You know, he's got the he's got the great last name. So he's an honorary member of uh, a tribe called Quest. Fight dog. <laughs> Inside Orange kicks it back up top, and Lawyer saves it with a shot clock at five. McQuay deep three. A foul here. After McQuay got the rebound, it's going against Michigan State. Uh, you don't typically see a basketball player coming to the game with cotton in his nostrils, but I, I guess Marcus Bingham Jr. is ready to go. Plus, you know, sometimes when you're in warm-up line, you might get hit in the nose of the ball inadvertently. But uh, he might be, hey, might be his way of getting ready to play. You never know. <laughs> yeah, he's got it in the left nostril. He also just picked up his first foul. Nick Ward sits next to Tom Izzo getting another breather. Well, Michigan State's had a number of open looks, especially from deep. And, just can't find the range as of right now. But. Trying to find the range on the other end and doing so, Corey Tillery. It's a confident shot. Yes, it was. Since Tech has done that twice now out of the timeout, that's a really good uh, set plays and has executed well. Ball was deflected in the backcourt. That's why it was no turnover. Six turnovers for the Golden Eagles, just one for Michigan State. Goins extra pass, but it was deflected. So just five to shoot. Lawyer, yes, and the foul. And last year's Michigan Mr. Basketball is going to the line. He's got a really good feel for the game, does Lawyer. He didn't panic. He knew the shot clock was running down, but a lot of times you'll see young players take a contested fadeaway shot as the clock's running down. He has gotten into the paint a couple times, putting pressure on the defense. I really like that. That's, that's a positive move for him. And Tom Izzo getting more comfortable with him each game. If you look at the minutes played, four against Kansas, then 10, then 12, and now he's out there quite a bit in the first half tonight. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be key that he comes in and provides those valuable minutes because with the, the 20 game Big Ten schedule, guy's going to get worn down a little bit. That's going to be a gauntlet this year, man. And Winston, it'd be tough to have him try to go 36, 37 right. minutes a night through that slate. Agree. But I think you're with me. That 20 game Big Ten schedule is exciting. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. And here's the thing as deep as the conference appears to be here in November, the winner may have five or six losses. I would not be surprised. It's going to be a fun Big Ten slate. Ward tap back off the miss by Henry. Well, Nick Ward, when he's this active and he's changed his body yet again, you know, it, when he's got quick feet, he's active, you don't put a body on him. He's going to be on that glass. He's the first Spartan in double figures with 10. It's a 5-0 Michigan State run. Vic. Nice step back, but great defense by Goins. Skip to McQuaid, and McQuaid buries it. And Tennessee Tech needs another timeout. It's an 8-0 run for the Spartans. What a roll by Cassius Winston. I mean, cross-court pass hits him right in the pocket. This is the steal that got it started. Kenny going, building the wall, going straight up. Little contact there, no call. Look at that pass. The thing about that, it hit McQuaid right in the pocket. Wow. This is not an easy pass, ladies and gentlemen. That's why Cassius Winston, one of the best in the country, at setting up his teammates. Beautiful look. 
Tom Izzo said about Cassius Winston that he has one of the top three basketball IQs I've ever coached. When you think about Tom Izzo being here 24 years and all the guys he's coached, that's high praise. But this is what you were talking about, the strength of the Big Ten. Pretty good start for the conference. Oh, it's been amazing. Illinois gets beat at home in a close game at Georgetown. Rutgers got handled a little bit by St. John's, but the rest of the, the you know the teams have really shown well. Iowa has beat Oregon and UConn in winning that tournament. So the league, perception-wise, this is huge, Brandon, because across the country, people are starting to take notice. Good to see Fran McCaffrey's club starting like that after they hit some rough patches last year. Yes, and his, his son, Connor McCaffrey, has been balling. Yep. 19 points, I believe, in that win against UConn. Strong off the glass. Goins collects it. The extra passes have been superb. Yes, they have. And a tap out another offensive rebound. Yep. And that leads to this. That's the only thing that Michigan State hasn't done well. They're 4 of 17 for 3. Yeah, but, you know, they got to keep taking them, Brandon, because they're getting good looks. I mean, the ball is swinging so well. This is one of the better assist teams in the country last season. And it continues this year. They, they do a fantastic job of turning down good shots and getting better shots. And those shots are going to fall because they've got some decent shooters. Yes, they do. And last year as a team, it was a 40% effort from long range for Michigan State. This year, they're under 35%. But you think as you get more games, the sample size increases, those numbers will go up. I think so. And I, I think a lot of times, when you're playing a team like Tennessee Tech that comes in, not a lot of confidence, a little undersized, they may not have the athleticism to keep up with you. You see Michigan State get a lot of open looks. Against a, a Big Ten opponent, maybe a, a, a power conference opponent, they won't get as open looks. And so it would be a little bit more like they're accustomed to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, more in rhythm. Yeah. Sometimes you can be too wide open. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for bailing me out. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know that from my days at the YMCA, Stephen. I want you to know that. You may have played at Illinois and been in a Final Four, but I've been at the Y. Five to shoot. Another extra pass, maybe one too many. No, it worked out okay, but a miss by Goins. I agree with you there. Yeah, great ball movers. Any one of those three guys could have taken that shot. But Tom Izzo loves the unselfishness of this team. I mean, the Spartans are really locked in on this end of the fourth, doing a really good job of being connected. Hillary, air ball, holding the Golden Eagles to 14 points through over 16 minutes of action and controlling the right direction. Oh, I, I totally agree. I think they had one of the better showings in the Garden in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. I mean, they had the Garden rocking, and Rutgers alums were very pleased with the way their teams play it. I think that's more of a, an indication of how good St. John's is this year that, as opposed to, you know, Rutgers not being competitive. Nick Ward is a perfect 6 of 6 from the floor. Oh, and his left hand dominant. If you're going to let him get to his left hand, he's going to hurt you. Tech and uh, Akea, Henry, they've got to figure out a way to keep him turning to a strong left hand. Lost it, did Henry. Langford leaves it for Winston, and Winston knocks it down. God, well, these guys, man, they have such great non-verbal communication. They look at each other. They know how to space. Yeah, those three juniors in particular, those two in Ward, it's like they played together for three years. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, you know, the, the subtleties of the game, Michigan State really pays attention to that. You know, passing the basketball, getting on the glass, but the, the non-verbal communication and body language are are big in this program. It's a 13-0 run right now, and Tennessee Tech has it scored in five minutes. Lankford's missed quite a few open looks. And that's going to be off on Kyle Arns. Here's that pass a moment ago for the three-pointer. Take a look at their eyes. Watch Lankford. He's going to peek around. He sees his buddy behind him, squares up. Cassius Winston steps into a rhythm three. That's 
Beautiful nonverbal communication between the backcourt mates. 22-point lead, largest of the half. Tennessee Tech, a tough start to the season, playing Memphis, North Carolina, and now here, but they're not doing themselves any favor on the offensive end as Vic airballs it. Stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall and John Crispin, they'll be along from our Chicago studio, getting you caught up on everything around the conference. A lot of games today in the Big Ten. Oh, yeah, some, some really good challenges. And, you know, right before we went on the air, Indiana dropped a tough one at Arkansas. Ward is 7 of 7 with 14 points. Okay, now, I think he's away from his left hand. He shows you the right. Hey, hey you know what? When it's your day, it's your day, and Michigan State will continue to get him the rock. If Texas, Tennessee Tech, rather, doesn't make an adjustment. Boy, another air ball again by Hunter Vick. So Ward, they go to the zone. They try to keep him away from his left. He pivots back right. Got a special bounce to him this season. Held that right hand in the air to say, hey, I could do that too. Yeah, he's, uh, he's feeling good about himself. But that's one of the things that the NBA scout said. You need to prove that other hand. You're going to need both at the next level. There's no doubt about it. And I think he's feeling pretty good about it right now. Miss on the lob there. And the end zone giving Vic the business on his two air balls. Offensive rebound for Alexander. Nice job by Xavier Tillman to get the rebound. Oh, oh. Oh, man. Winston could not give Lankford what would have been a great assist. Well, that looked like the Ron Davis play up at the end of the Indiana Arkansas game. What a possession for Michigan State. They are just dominating and imposing their will. That's well, like a batarang. Watch. Josh Lankford in, out, cross, behind the back. My goodness. Showing off some ball handling skills. And then this is what Michigan State has been known for in the Tom Izzo era, pounding both ends of the glass. Already 16 for Nick Ward. On pace to go past his career high of 25. And things just not going the way of Tennessee Tech right now. That went off the knee of Tillery. Coach, you know, you have this a special type of psychology you have to have to keep your guys up under these circumstances. Because they're natural. You know, these guys are they're human. They get beat like this. And the tendency is to let down. Coach Payne is trying to instill some things in them in spite of the score. Lankford, no. Ward, yes. Just too big and agile. Trying to box him out. You got to box him out from the three-point line. Because they're just so strong, Brandon. They just ride you underneath the bucket. And the defense continues to excel on this end. And Ward... Couldn't get the steal. Knocked it in the backcourt, though. Doing a little bit of everything. That's a 245-pound two, man, ladies and gentlemen. And I thought he might lay out for it. Well, those people in the front row, they're happy that he did not lay out for it. <laughs> That's true. They were bracing for contact over there. I'm surprised they didn't start getting up. I would have been getting up. Alexander, no. Final seconds, Winston, no, but what a half for Michigan State, 42 to 14 on both ends, they dominated Nick Ward, put in eight there. Michigan State's going to be great, these are the guys that are going to have to lead them, they all took turns in terms of looking for their shot, Lankford didn't shoot the ball very well up to his standards, but he did very well setting his teammates up. Yeah, four assists and two steals for Lankford, and then you look what Ward and Winston did. 18 for Nick Ward, 11 for Winston, rest of the team, 13. And the, the good thing about it, they all came. There were very few four shots in the first half. They're getting excellent looks because of the ball movement, because 
or they're pushing the tempo like they normally do. It just puts so much pressure on Tennessee. Tech. I would say those are the two things that have impressed me. The ball movement, the extra passes, and then just the collective defensive effort. Yeah, they've been, oh man, they've been smothering on the defensive end. They knew that Makaya Henry was a go-to guy. They were, they were trying to get him off early. Nick Ward did a good job of limiting, limiting his ability on the offensive end. Tennessee Tech just 6 of 21 from the floor in that first half. Michigan State 18 of 40. McQuaid had a quiet first half. Lankford, we talked about his assists and his steals. There's his scoring ability. And you referenced this at, in the first half, Brandon. His ability in the short range, or mid-range, I should say, game. Nice turnaround jump shot. He's had at least 15 points in all three games coming into tonight. Gets two there. Henry may have walked. Yes, he did. There is that mid-range shot by Langford. Langford can really do this to opposing guards. He's got good size, good, good spring on his jumper. Get in that mid-range area, the high post area, and just elevate. Tennessee Tech continues to struggle on both sides as Winston doesn't make it any easier. A three-corner pocket. Once again, I know we saw a broken record. Great ball movement. And then the McQuaid steal. McQuaid finishes, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line to try to put the Spartans at 50 points. They're just having fun right now. They really are. Watch this hot potato action right here. Double team, hit Goins, cross court, one more pass, wide open corner pocket. And then right there, I think Lewis Garrison, the, the official, was getting in the play there. <laughs> nice finish he by had, McQuaid. Yeah, he had to duck out of the way. So McQuaid does get Michigan State to 50 points. He has six tonight. Tech, they haven't scored since the 739 mark of the first half. Yeah, they just can't get anything easy. You know, they not forcing a lot of misses to be able to get out on the break, and they don't seem to want to try to push the ball that much. And the rims aren't being very kind here at the Breslin Center. Lankford, yes. We said that they are having fun. Yes, the 11th ranked Spartans are enjoying themselves tonight, and they have ballooned good with that outside jump to start the fall. We're even struggling in the first half. It's an 11 0 Michigan State run to start this second half now. And how about, speaking of sharing the ball, 15 assists on 22 made field goals for the Spartans. That's when you know the Spartans are rolling. And the thing is, you got guys that can go get their own shot when necessary. Lankford could not quite stay in bounds. It's going to be interesting to see the kind of defense that Michigan State is playing right now. Can they extend that? You know, they went up against Kansas that first game of the season. And I thought they did an outstanding job coming back in that game. Yeah, they got down 15 and then battled back, lost by 5, 92-87. Udoka Azabuki was just a little too much in that game inside. There is the slump buster for Tennessee Tech. They hadn't scored since over the seven-minute mark in the first half. Fairfield got out. Beneficiary of a nice outlet pass. Got up ahead of the defense. But, you know, you were talking about that Kansas game. And Nick Ward seemed to really be out of sorts a little bit. Going too fast. He had a lot of turnovers. I think he had five turnovers in that game. And, you know, you expect jitters in the first game of the season. And to have to play Kansas. Your first time out, I mean, that's that's a tough task. Yeah, and Azubuki's really good. I don't think he's as good, maybe, as he was in that game against Nick Ward. Ward just had an off night. And Vassar will now go to the line. But that was a great test, and the schedule is not going to get a whole lot easier for Michigan State. They're going to go to that Vegas Invitational and play UCLA and then either North Carolina or Texas. So Tom Izzo knows he's got some stiff tests early. And I think Tom likes it. I think he likes it hard. You know, I think he, he wants to know what he's got. And he puts his guys through very early uh, trial by fire is what I call it. 
And then you think about it, you go Louisville, and then you're in conference play, and then Florida. Listen, and Florida's still smarting from that opening loss. They really got handled by Florida State, the in-state rivals. So you're right, Michigan State will have some really nice tests here before the Big Ten Conference slate. But tonight it hasn't been much of an issue. Bingham, we've seen this early, and we see it right there. He can shoot that shot all day. The coaches think he may have the best shooting stroke on the team. I mean, that's that's Joshua Langford, that's McQuaid, that's Cassius Winston. They think this young fellow may have the smoothest one. It's fun to watch. It's 6-11. It's a pretty release. It is. And I think that when he gets, continues to get stronger, He's going to be a nice little X factor this season for the Spartans. Well, they've got him on a weight and food program right now. He's eating everything in his sight, he says. I mean, man, how good is it? You're in college and their feet are And they're just forced. saying, yeah, late like, at night they're feeding you pizza. Right. It's like, come on, man, who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> Winston. Oh, boy, the route is on. Man, I just wonder how long. Like, I wonder in these situations where these coaches have these huge leads, how long do you leave your starters in, yeah. you know? And you don't, you don't want to run the score up. That's not what he's trying to do. But these guys are taught to play as hard as they can every minute they're on the floor. And it doesn't change because of the score. Here is that three-point shot by Marcus Bingham. 6-10. I mean, he had a guy flying at him, and it didn't bother his release at all. So, expect Michigan State fans expect to see that a lot moving forward. Well, when the starters do go out for Michigan State, we're going to see a lot of that five-man freshman class. I have a sense here down the stretch. One that has a, a tremendous upside for the Spartans. And no McDonald's All-Americans in the class. Good no look from Bingham and Tillman. But Tom Izzo likes this class. It's kind of his blue collar type of five man crew that he's got in in the freshman crew. Bingham showing a little no look right there. Okay, young fella, I see you. He can do more than just shoot the three. He can. He's shooting two. He's like, uh, he, he looks, that's how Adrian Payne looked a little bit when he first came in college, real, real thin, but. Payne put on about 40 pounds while he was here, so Bingham's got a lot of pizza to eat. Yeah, he does, <laughs> and he'll be doing it. He's got a 7-4 wingspan, Marcus Bingham. Going to get a quick breather. <laughs> Producer Jim Ressler just said something pretty funny. He said Tom Izzo's pointing him to the concession stand. Yeah. Go get some food and come back in the game. And get a couple hot dogs, young fellow. 61-18. <laughs> Coaching 16 minutes remaining. Look at Nick Moore slide his feet. On Vassar, the guard. That was another thing the NBA scout said that he needed to improve on the ball defense. They have gotten away with a bump there, but Clay finishes anyway. Mike Clay on the concentration that time. And, and that's the beauty of youth. He popped right back up because if I go down like that, it's going to be a while before I get back up. <laughs> a little zone action from Tennessee Tech. They're just trying to find anything right now. A lot of cross-court skips here. And that'll work. Joshua Langford. So Langford is heating up. He now has 11. Coming in averaging a team best 17.3 through the two and one start so far. Good pass there and Golday finishes. Yeah, Clay has been good here off the bench for Tennessee Tech. Look for his shot, set his teammates up. Oh my goodness. Ooh, even Xavier Tillman's getting into the act. His first three pointer this year. Tom Izzo finding something to yell about, telling Tillman to stay down. Well, Tom Izzo is going to coach to the end, no matter what the score. Ward high for the rebound. Winston, Arns. 
Langford tried to save it, couldn't. Well, talk about a passing clinic. Tillman. Young man, he went up and made the first free throw. He intentionally missed the second. And Indiana comes up short. But they'll learn a lot from that because uh, Morgan was in foul trouble early in that game, and they were still very competitive. Tennessee Tech starting to pick it up a little bit. Henry with a two-handed flush. And Arkansas, I think, is going to be a little bit better than probably projected in the SEC this year. They got a decent amount back. I agree. And, uh, great athleticism and length, especially on their back line. Dr. Lawyer back in the game, as is Gabe Brown. Arts foul. So we are now seeing a couple more of those freshmen into the lineup for Tom Izzo. Speaking of looking around the league, get a peek at the Wendy's Conference news and notes. Big Ten defeated the Big East in the Gavit games. Freshman sensation in Ann Arbor. They really like Iggy Brasdakis. And he put up 20 points and seven rebounds. Another impressive win for Michigan. Michigan is playing as the defensive side as well as any team in the country right now. And, you know, they're going to give themselves a chance because I know this is Bill Nova team won, lost four draft picks in the NBA. It's still a quality team and quality program. Michigan took them apart on their home floor. The, the defensive ability that they're showing against Providence today, and they're going to be tough to, they're gonna be tough to uh, compete against. Yeah, it's one thing to beat Villanova, even though they've lost players by two or three. They beat them by 30. Yeah. I mean, it was, as you said, a shellacking. Hey. Alexander with a strong finish. Alexander got a lively body. He's got that right hand all wrapped up. Hopefully he can get healthy soon because he could be a, a problem in the OVC. His dad, I referenced it a bit earlier, but he was the 13th pick by the Magic back in 2000. Played at Fresno State in a few years in the NBA. Yep. See, he's got the good build and that uh, underhand shot. I mean, it's, uh, I love it, man. It's old school. It is old school. Marcus Bingham trying to talk to him a little bit. He's having none of it. I think the Michigan State players like their shoes. That's what they're looking down at. You mean the purple shoes of yeah. Tennessee Tech? Yes. Well, Markham was like, Marcus was like, man, I don't, know, I don't think I have some. Purple was in my closet. <laughs> Here's a three on one. Lawyer to Orange. Nice finish with a finger roll. Man, I think Orange was trying to turn that one over. He didn't get contact. That might have been a highlight. Like it might have slipped out of his hand a little bit going up when he was trying to flush it. You're right. 20 fast break points for the Spartans. In and out for Vic, knocked out, stays on this end. Barnes here receiving the pass and yeah, he goes up hard. Nice finish. And you know these minutes are important. Don't look at the score, ladies and gentlemen. Michigan State, they're building towards something. As, as is Texas Tech, they just want to establish these good habits, even in this, in this point square like this. And Tom Izzo seems to be experimenting with a lot of different lineups mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Valuable minutes. And once again, you know, Michigan State, we talked about it coming to the game. You have to play against themselves sometimes. And your opponent doesn't quite match up physically or confidence-wise, but you still got to come out and play your game. Gabe Brown. He'll have two at the line. Another long freshman, 6'7", long arms. From Ypsilanti, Michigan. Man, that's Ann Arbor's back door there. So, man, I'm sure he grew up hearing about Michigan this, Michigan that, and chose to go to Michigan State. A lot of recruiting battles happen in this state between those two programs. No secret. You know what's so cool, though, that Tom Izzo and John Beeline are total gentlemen. Absolutely. They get along great. They, they, they you know, push the, the goodness of this game forward how they conduct themselves and they speak up on topics and things of that nature. I mean, it's it's something to have two teams in the same state as, as successful as these two. Yeah. They maintain the rivalry, but they keep it classy as That's head right. coaches. That's right. And, and when, when John Beeline had double bypass surgery, Tom Izzo was one of the first people to send him a note afterwards. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, 
these guys love competing against each other. I mean, you got Beeline, who has been called by Derek Walton, the guru, and they have a Hall of Fame coach in Tom Izzo. That doesn't get much better than that. That's going to be a double dribble. And it's going to take us to a timeout. All adds up to 17 points, and don't forget his usual six assists. Yeah, just a confident young man, and you know now this is time. You know you step up, you lose Jaron Jackson Jr. and Miles Bridges, and so no need to to defer from here on out. Winston is the is the engine that makes this team go. Also lost Tup Tup there from last year. Really. The heart and soul of that team. Yeah, and a, and a tremendous leader, one of the best leaders Tom Izzo has ever had. And he could really spell Winston, and that's where we discussed yeah, it. But yeah, Foster yeah, Lawyer is going to need to be able to put in 10 to 12 minutes a night later in the season. I agree, and, and also Matt McQuaid yeah. is going to get a look at the point guard position as well, some backup point, because he's done that before. So Winston trying to lob it up. Ward wasn't ready for it. He had a block. Watch the shot clock. Uh, out of bounds anyway. It'll belong to Tennessee Tech. Tuesday, it's an all-new journey. Catch a senior day edition of the show. Produce David Blau and Michigan's Karan Higdon reflect on their Big Ten football careers. Plus, we'll take you behind the scenes for their final home games. Tuesday, 11 at 30 Eastern. Now, Br Brandon, you told me something about the Northwestern football team that I'm not sure people are aware of. Oh, that they've won eight straight road games in Big Ten play. That is unbelievable. And they've won 14 of the last 15 games overall in conference action. Unbelievable. I mean, that's dominating the Western yep. division. Yep. And they're going to go to Indianapolis and wait to see who they play, Ohio State or Michigan. Well, that's, that's I don't care what the, the records are, what's on the line. That nastiness between Ohio State and Michigan is, is something special. Man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, you, like, that was a point in television for me growing up, seriously. And I'm a big football fan, and I, oh, man. Well, it's noon Saturday, so clear your slate on Fox for that one. But you're going back to the Bo Schimbeckler, Woody Hayes days. Yeah, that'd be the fun stuff, right? <laughs> you know, the no love loss. I think uh, you know, the, the two men that are at the helm right now are doing just fine in terms of keeping that rock free. Yeah. <laughs> and so if uh, Coach Meyer feels better, he just had some. It looked like he was feeling too well on the sideline, but barely this weekend. They barely eked out a win in overtime. Driving inside, Jared Sherfield. Josh Langford took a shot in the eye. Keep an eye on that. He was late to get back into the picture. And now they just left him. Defensive breakdown. I think the eye looked okay. Oh, yeah. Anytime you get a chance on offense, any injury seems to get miraculously better. You're right, though. He got poked in the eye, and he was kind of grabbing his face for a second, but he recovered. Funny thing about offense, boy. Great healer. Looked like on the rebound attempt, right there. But right here, guys, you got to read the scouting report. Langford can shoot it with one eye if necessary. So he now has 14, Winston 17, Ward 18. It's all about the junior class tonight. And it's going to be that way if Michigan State is going to have the success that they anticipate. Conference has been preseason favorite to win the conference. The last year winning the regular season in the Big Ten. Offensive foul there going against Johnny Vassar. Wade is grimacing a little bit. He gets up quickly. Great job of squaring up Johnny Vassar to take that hit right in the chest. You see Vassar checking on him. They've gotten wind knocked out. Who says this game isn't physical? Yeah. McQuaid, luckily, though, okay. Winston. Oh and the goodness. finish to boot with a left hand. 
See, people don't realize how long Cassius Winston's arms are until you see a play like that, where he gets to the rim. He's not, he's not going to elevate the best as a point guard, but he can get away from the defense and enough English on the finish. The lead is 51. It's an 8-0 Michigan State run right now. Kaya Henry with nowhere to go against Ward. Has to do something. Well, that works. Tough 17 footer. Nick Ward is like, how did he make that? I did everything I could defensively. That's one where you just tip your cap. That's right. And when you're still up 49, you can tip your cap and not get angry about it. <laughs> That's true. Langford, there's the mid range game. Yeah, he's after struggling from deep early on. It looks like he's being a lot more aggressive and looking for his opportunity. First half against Kansas, he was non-existent. Tom Izzo told him in the locker room, we need four out of you. He got 15 points in the second half, and he's taken off since then. Yeah, and he's a guy that I think, you know, he has the ability to take over games, but I think his personality is such, he just wants to be one of the guys. You know, I don't think he cares about stardom too much or anything like that. He just wants to be one of the guys, but he's got to step up. You know, you can create shots like we just saw on the baseline. Obviously, you can hit the, the spot-up jumper. He runs the floor very well on the wing. It's going to be a fascinating Big Ten season. i tell you what. You know, we talked about it earlier, the depth and how well this Big Ten conference did in the Gavin games. But the true test in the eye test nationally, perception-wise, is that Big Ten ACC challenge. They do well there. Then the rest of the country will change their mind a little bit about the Big Ten. Boy, Ward fell hard after that alley oop attempt, but he pops right up. I love it. I mean, Ward runs the floor as hard as any big in college basketball. And watch him. He's like, man, I'm all right. <laughs> Do some calisthenics, stretch a little bit, and then go over and holler at Coach Izzo. He looked like an acrobat. Now he'll go to the line with 8-10 remaining. Full of energy, Nick Ward. He was a big that had to drop a lot of weight upon arriving at East Lansing. You know, wasn't always receptive to feedback, but now much better at that. You know, he really took to what the NBA scouts told him. And he really improved his game, and that's not good news for the rest of the Big Ten. No, it is not. He's hoping he can put in a few more minutes this year. Freshman sophomore season under 20 a game. He wants to be up around 25 to 27, he said. And I think he'll get that. And, you know, he's a year older, so he'll be smarter on the defensive end. He used to pick up quick fouls his first couple seasons. I think if he can eliminate that, he'll have that 25, 26 minutes, I believe. Active hands with the Spartans. They've had a number of deflections on the evening. And the turnovers continue to mount up that 17 for the Golden Eagles. Good spin. Left hand finish. Back to the line goes Nick Ward. Good job of pushing the tempo every single time. Ward now has 23, and he's going to exit, so he'll probably finish too shy of his career high 25. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Good effort, and I think a, a very welcome sight for Spartan fans because the reports had been he was going to be out a week with that ankle sprain, but he looks great. Hey! That's great news because they're going to have him for that Vegas Invitational. Those juniors that we discussed, 58 points combined and 12 assists, three turnovers, not too bad. Tennessee Tech, the ball's moving so quickly, they're just not able to apply any pressure. Sophomore Tillman lost it. That's the difference in college basketball today than 15, 20 years ago. They had a three-on-two numbers advantage, and they were trying to run to the three instead of trying to run to the hole. You're saying back in the day, you go straight to the basket. Go straight, straight to the rim. Because when you get a dunk on somebody, that's a psychological thing. You know, you don't want guys running down the floor dunking on you. 
Like the fly in Illini back then. <laughs> That's right. Henry, a little short. And the foul is going to go against Michigan State's Marcus Bingham. Well, Aaron Henry from Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis. A lot of upside for this young man. But one of the things he's learning as a freshman with Tom Mizzo you got to have the right body language, and that's something that freshmen sometimes, you know, when you're not used to being pushed by a Hall of Fame coach like that, you have to learn these things. And so, you know, Henry, Tillman, all these guys are learning that. And in this program, you got to have the, body, the right body language. Well, Henry's the one that Izzo has relied on most so far, 15 minutes a game, most of the freshmen. He said his body is the most college ready. Alexander's going to head to the line. Tillman bumped it. Hey, Alexander, when he puts it on the deck, pretty athletic. I mean, look, he gets past Bingham right there. Draws the contact. We're going to get to see the underhand shot again. I love it, man. Hopefully he can knock two down here. the first one he's the only returning starter from a season ago for Tennessee Tech a little bit of a rebuilding year under Steve Payne maybe if he doesn't have that arm sleeve and that heavy wrap thumb it might have might help a little bit Missed them both yeah one of four at the line tonight and just seven of 25 on the season hello Aaron Henry for that sideline pass break that Michigan State does so well. Advancing the ball via the pass along one sideline. They run like their lives depend on. Backdoor cut. Nice job at the rim by Junior Clay. Junior Clay has been good. He's been one of the bright spots for Tech here. Tillman just adding to the offensive parade for Michigan State. 88 to 30. Let's go back to that dunk. This is a BT and standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Young getting out ahead of the defense. Aaron Henry doing a good job of sprinting. I mean, you have to be committed to running. Guys talk all the time. Oh yeah, we want a fast break. We want to run. But you have to commit to running each and every time. Michigan State does it as well as anybody in the country. First points of the game for Henry, and now the three-point attempt. Xavier Tillman can't complete the three-point play. Back the other way we go with Clay. Foul before the shot. Ward, Winston, and Langford. Now getting to enjoy some time over on the bench after that output combined. It's pretty impressive. And here's the thing. The assist total, again, you know, that's the ball's moving quicker than the defense can respond, resulting in open looks. The defense held Tennessee Tech to 14 points in the first half. They've only scored 16 for almost 15 minutes here in the second half. And you know, when you have such a big lead, you would you expect guys to relax a little bit, but not so much with the Spartans. They, they are keeping the pressure up, staying with their principles. Bad pass. Jared Shurfield with a finger roll. Shurfield must have blew a tire going in there. Oh, and Tom is over. He's living. He takes the timeout. It doesn't matter what the lead is. Look at him. He expects perfection on every possession. And you know what? It's, it, we're still in November, so he's yelling for January, February, and March right now. Nice job shooting the gap for Sherfield. Like he had a little uh, flat tire there. I know he wanted to come, you know, come in and hammer it home, but it kind of looked like me going to the rim lately. Arndt's got the turnover, and now Izzo is letting him hear it. Coming up, the big show will give you highlights around the Big Ten and post-game reaction straight from the arena. We'll join Mike Paul and John Crispin on the big show tonight right after our game on BZN.
Mike Hall and John Christmas, man. That's that's gonna be fun to watch. Mike Hall, you can't throw anything at him that he won't oh, catch. He's ready. Oh my goodness. One of the wittiest guys yes. in the business. I mean, it, you know, a stand-up comic. Like seriously. So this guy is uh, quick, and you know, Christmas. Never one to not have an opinion about something. No, <laughs> they're good. They're going to jostle back and yeah. forth a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Another Michigan State turnover here late as things are getting a little bit sloppy. They, Texas Tech, they run this high screen and roll and they look for some backdoor action. Michigan State has been really disciplined all, after, all the evening in denying those movements by Tech. Speaking of denying, Marcus Bingham with a block. That leads to the Henry triple. The utilization of the cross-court pass has been impressive this afternoon. So it seems like every one of the Spartans has gotten involved in it. Michigan State has hit 13 three-pointers. Good defense by Xavier Tillman. Foster Lawyer needs a little help. He gets it. Spartans nine away from the century mark. Two and one on the young season. About to get to three and one. Bingo. A little long there. Oh, we praised his three-point shot earlier. He can't do that to us. That was ugly. That was real ugly. That's why he opened the door on it. <laughs> Offensive foul. Came to college too, too, uh, too early. Too early. You missed it by a generation. Man. Foster Lawyer controlling the point for the Spartans out of the timeout. Brown, yet another three-pointer for Michigan State. They're 14th tonight. Brown's a good-looking prospect as well. Good size at 6'7". And he and Aaron Henry can shoot like that from the perimeter. Michigan State's going to have some depth to throw and keep a lot of different looks. That's the first three-pointer that Brown has hit in his young MSU career. Wild Ooh. shot that time for Vassar. Lawyer won a couple of state titles at Clarkston. Mr. Basketball in this state last season. Tillman, deep post touch. Nice shot, Bay. Offensive board. And Gabe Brown goes to work. No, and Michigan, I'll say it again, Michigan State's not trying to run up the score, but these guys want to play as well. You know, when they get their opportunities, they're going hard. Wow, good job of being in the right place at the right time. And work in the weight room is paying off. Nice little finish here for Brown. The other two games he played in, only two points, one field goal made, and now chance to get five points here late. Yeah, and that was a big confidence points there. When you're a freshman, you come into a situation, you've been the man all high school career. You come here, coming off the bench, it's a different feel for you. And the time you see that ball go through the hoop, that, that confidence elevates. 97 to 32 with two minutes to go. In and out, it's been that kind of night for Tennessee Tech. Walk-ons have headed to the scores table for Tom Izzo. Lawyer wraps it around in a flush by Thomas Kithier. Oh, man. That's so good. And Kithier involved. And Lawyer laying down the law there along the baseline. You know I had to get that one time. <laughs> And that's a glimpse, though, of what Lawyer was able to do all high school career. He can pass it. Here's that assist. You know, Foster, this is what I like. When the shot clock is running down, Lawyer gets in the paint. He doesn't settle. An excellent feed along the baseline. And 
teammates. Kip, you love that. Right there, enjoying him getting dunked, but I like what Lawyer does in get late shot clock situations. Not, you see a lot of college guys will settle for a contested jumper. He gets in the paint. That puts a lot of pressure on the defense. He gets high fives from his teammates. As several of the walk-ons get into the basketball game here. Michigan State sitting on 99. The crowd keeps imploring them. They want 100. The game summary that pretty much tells the story. Yeah, why not? I mean, they played well today. They shared the basketball. Number of assists. They were a little cold to start from three, but then they heated up. Double dribble. Yeah. Henry just paused for a second, and the turnover ensued. Langford still clapping. And you see Josh Langford understands that Henry kind of gets down on himself. Tell him next play, don't worry about it. That's, that's leadership. That's what you need from your upper class. One minute left to play. One minute. Gold Day with the air ball on the hook. And with 14 to shoot, Tennessee Tech will keep it. But I think Michigan State, we, we talked about the loss against Kansas. I think they're ready for that Vegas Invitational. I would agree. And, you know, they have the depth that you like to see from a, a conference contender. You know, the starting five is intact. Arns is playing better. Uh, McQuaid, like to see him shoot the ball with a little bit more consistency. Uh, but, yeah, they, they have the depth to compete with anybody in the conference. John Crisper and I talked about it last week that this, without Jackson Bridges, it's more by committee this year. But man, when they work like they did tonight together, it's a pretty good committee. It is. And it's, you know, these are the teams I think that Tom Izzo likes more so than having, you know, parade all American. Oh, I, that was old school right there. McDonald's all American. <laughs> Can't get to 100 on the burnt shot attempt, and the crowd exasperated. But look at this, Hoiberg with a steal. Son of Fred Hoiberg. Oh, the crowd wants it so bad. Boy, these kids are playing hard, too. Jack Hoiberg. No, but he'll go to the line to try to hit the century mark. Oh, my goodness. And they are indeed playing hard to that final horn. Yep. And believe me, his dad Fred has got an eye on these free throw attempts right here. And there's 100. You would think that they just clinched the Big Ten title. <laughs> he gets a vote. The walk-on with his first points in a Michigan State uniform. And they will be the final points in this game. A dominating effort from the 11th ranked Spartans. 101 to 33.